This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Shanta. Shanta is an entertainer, but she also loves to be entertained, which is why she has Flow TV brought to her through Flow's 100% Fiber to the Home Network. It's great for busy Shanta because she can control the time she watches her favorite shows, play back from the start in case she missed it, or even record with cloud video recording. And with her Flow Services bundle, enjoys much more for much less. Visit any Flow retail outlet. Call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. Welcome to the Bobby This Today Evening Updates for Tuesday, June 14. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Topping the news at this hour, one man is in police custody after triggering a security alarm at the Grantley Adams International Airport this afternoon. The man, a passenger on Air Canada Flight 1966, reportedly made a threat on board the aircraft, which landed just after 1.30 p.m. Police and emergency personnel immediately spun into action surrounding the aircraft, which was parked at the northernmost end of the airport. After a near two-hour delay, passengers were allowed to disembark safely. Officials remain tight-lipped as investigations continue. But passengers tell Barbados today it was a terrifying ordeal. I just saw the gentleman pacing back and forth and was in and out of sleep, and then I heard the announcement on the PA system where they said that uh, there's an incident and they're taking care of it. As I looked back, he was probably three seats behind me. Then I saw that they were attempting to restrain him and he was getting irate. So it was a little scary, but with everything going on in the world today, you don't know what to expect. Especially coming home, you don't expect that. So it was a little scary, to be honest. First party flight, I was, I was uh, sleeping, but other people were seeing that he was walking up in the aisle muttering and he had like a candle in his hands and just not lit. And um, he was just walking up and down, acting strangely. Then he went back to the seat, and then it was like he was saying, um, if you're not Beijing, get off the flight, you know, he's going to divert the plane. And then he began to talk. He, began, he was just muttering a lot of stuff. And then um, at one point, you know, uh, I was, what I, they told me to move because they had to restrain him. And uh, when I was moving, like he was cursing me and, and shouting at me and stuff like that, and using foul language. So I moved out and then they came and they diverted him and he wasn't really like, he wasn't violent but what he was saying because at one point he was talking about ISIS and bombs so it was really what he was saying but to me it more seemed like if it could have been a mental illness as opposed to actual threat. So he was just quiet for the rest of the flight. Um, they brought up some big guys that were on the plane. I don't think they were like any of the Air Force people that fly on planes but they brought up a gentleman, and, a couple of gentlemen and one of them stayed in the seat like away from him for the rest of the flight but he was pretty quiet. Um, once we landed, um, we had to wait for the police and BDF to come on board and um, they, they, they took him off and then we were able to come off the plane. It was a bit wild. It was a different kind of flight that you're normally not used to. I explain. Uh, yeah, just... Yeah, um, yeah, it was pretty, yeah. We just kind of woke up, kind of heard the commotion going on. We didn't really know what was happening. But then like, we looked back and we seen a couple guys just training the guy putting him in check, keeping him close, so we were like, okay, I guess something kind of crazy is happening. We don't know what's happening, but you know, as long as you get this safe, that's what's up, and then yeah. So we kind of found out everything else after or later, and we are like, oh, okay, okay, I see. So, can't we really be saying those type of things, you know, on the, on a plane Canada. like that, on Air Canada, so. So, what, yeah. what was being said? Um, just kind of like, <laughs> bad things, kind of like, bad threats type things like that, you know, on a plane, and after everything that's been happening lately, not a good time to say that, so yeah. Kind of rattle things up a lot. In a brief statement, Air Canada officials explained that a passenger became unruly on the flight, which had 114 passengers. It noted that as a precautionary measure, a full search of the plane was conducted. Air Canada said its customer service agents are taking care of passengers as investigations continue. In other news, Environment Minister Dr. Dennis Lowe must go. Opposition Senator Wilfred Abrams is again sounding the call as he rubbished the government's plan to clear garbage pileups across the island. While denying that the Sanitation Service Authority has a fleet of trucks at the Bridgetown port, Dr. Lowe announced yesterday that his ministry had reactivated emergency response teams from the Ministry of Transport and Works, the National Conservation Commission and the Drainage Division to assist with the collection of garbage. Abrams, the Barbados Labour Party's shadow minister for the Ministry of the Environment, is not only strongly objecting to the plan, but he wants to know who will benefit most from the move. 
Abrams charges it reflects poor planning and gives the impression that workers at the Sanitation Service Authority are lazy and inefficient. The senator is adamant that the minister should have purchased much-needed garbage trucks months ago, insisting that he should not have to resort to an emergency plan to address the collection of waste. In a strong show of support for their boss, workers employed by the Mac Maloney Group of Companies are urging the Town and Country Planning Department to approve a number of outstanding projects. Assistant Financial Controller for Preconco, Kirk Smith, raised concern that persistent long delays are jeopardizing jobs and millions of dollars in investment. Chief among the projects Smith wants to see started is the much-talked-about Hyatt Hotel and the Ridge Housing Project. At the moment, those are the main ones, and if, if the ones that we have in right now don't come to fruition, we're in surely in, in a few months' time, we can't go, we'll be at standstill. Just last week, um, Mr. Seeley made that comment, you know, and in the same article, in the same, the same breath, the person speaking, they did make mention that obviously Mark Maloney did make a comment that he was had not yet received the permission. So you have one ministry who is pushing for the Hayat to get started, and another division who seems to be holding it back. Um, it'd be nice if those ministries could come together and you know and, and get get on the same page so that you know this project could come could come to fruition. I mean that will be a, a beautiful project, um, you know where it's going to be located, and that will that job creation as well. And that will bring increased the, the tourist capacity to Barbados. Meanwhile, a government project which involves the construction of a new police station and a magistrate's court, as well as an upgrade to two others, is well on the way. Today, Attorney General Adriel Brafwit and other officials got a first hand look at the new facility at Kane Garden St. Thomas and improvements to the Black Rock Police Station, the Old Mill Barracks at Central Police Station, and the Hastings Wood in police stations. He told reporters while there have been some setbacks, he's pleased with the Citizens Securities Project. I think generally we are seem to be off on course, um, except for the first project at Kane Garden where we had some challenges in terms of the foundation. As I said a bit earlier, um, maybe that's a blessing in disguise because we've ended up with some additional um, space. Um, Cost-wise, I think everything seemed to be on stream. I think that's the most important thing because we are, we've been given a, a budget and we've been told that you will not be receiving any more money other than seven six million dollars which is the total cost of the other projects. Um, so we have to be very cognizant of the importance of, of ensuring that we, we stay within, within those lines. There's regional and international news after this short break. To the region now in St. Lucia, a nine-year-old boy has died from the H1N1 virus. His death was confirmed by the Trinidad-based Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA. Health officials are urging St. Lucians to remain vigilant and to guard against vector-borne diseases. On the international front, the World Health Organization says there is a very low risk that the upcoming Rio de Janeiro Olympics will accelerate the spread of the Zika virus around the globe. At a meeting today of independent Zika experts, the UN Health Agency reaffirmed its previous advice that only pregnant women should skip the August 5-21 to 21 Games in Brazil 
deemed the epicenter of the ongoing outbreak. The expert group acknowledged that mass gatherings like the Olympics can result in the amplification of transmission, but it still insists that the individual risks in areas of transmission are the same whether or not a mass gathering is conducted. Back in February, the spread of the Zika virus was declared a global emergency. The disease, which is transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, causes only mild symptoms like fever and rash, but it is also responsible for severe birth defects, including babies born with abnormally small heads and a rare neurological syndrome that can cause death or temporary paralysis. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.publicstoday.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good evening.